Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm here to do my June wrap up. For those of you that's wa that have watched my vlogs, you will have seen me talk about all of these books. So you might want to skip this video. <laughs> no, I shouldn't really say that. But you might want to skip this video if you've watched all four of my vlogs because I've talked about books as I've gone. But this is for those of you who haven't. That's why I still wanted to film. I have so many, like my whole bed. I can't really show you, but my whole bed is just covered in books. Um, so. Most of it's non-fiction, we're going to go through the non-fiction first and I'm literally just going to pull them off the pile these aren't the order I read them in. So the first book we have is The Premonition by Michael Lewis. Um, this book is about Covid, so for those who are not keen to look at Covid at the minute, this is probably not one for you. But it isn't like a bitter blow by blows about how things have happened. This is about the unseen stories of all of the people who'd expected there to be a pandemic and the work they did when the kind of worst case thoughts became reality. Um, I kept telling Tom about this, there were some stories in here that I could like hardly believe, like infecting snakes with Ebola, <laughs> like so much stuff. Um, and I would say it's not, there's, you know, there's the government incompetence that kind of feeds in at the, at the beginning of Covid in here, but there's an awful lot which happens before and it's just looking at all the different people in the US, but looking at all the different people who do their jobs all year round, all decades around, to prepare for pandemics and what their role is, and I really, really enjoyed this one. The next one I had, I read super quickly. This is Amateur by Thomas Page McBee, and this follows a trans man who has decided that he wants to better understand his relationship with masculinity and himself through learning how to become an amateur boxer. Um, boxing normally isn't the kind of thing that would interest me that much, but I loved this book. Um, I felt like it was just such a breath of fresh air to be reading about masculinity in these types of ways, and writing about masculinity and dissecting it and that as a gender role, you know, combined with and as separate to trans masculinity. And it was just amazing. I read quite a lot to Tom because there were bits um, that I felt he would kind of relate to as not fitting into stereotypical or ideal manly roles um, and I, would, I couldn't recommend this highly enough actually, I, I love this. I feel bad I didn't pick it up sooner but I'm really glad I've read it. Then next I have Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. This one looks at the, it's kind of like essays throughout her life looking at the experience of racism through an Asian American lens and sort of examining um, how racism affects Asian people differently to how it might affect black people um, and it just has these little personal asides about um, model minority um, kind of stereotypes and what that means to people and the ways that people are impacted by these types of racism and how they might look different. I'm pretty sure there was an essay in here about fetishization as well, um, though I did read this one towards the beginning of the month, um, but I really enjoyed this one too. I think I read it probably quite quickly, I read it probably in about two days, um, but again, would recommend for having some really solid non-fiction this month. Then another book that you'll have seen me talk about a lot if you've been watching my vlogs is Me and White Supremacy. This is a book about anti-racism that challenges the reader to engage in the work through reflective journaling throughout a 28 day period. Um, it comes with little topics to read around to kind of educate yourself on an element of white supremacy and then it gives you a, like this, a reflective journaling prompt for that day that you go away and do in your own, in your own sort of time. <laughs> um, and I, I really liked the process of doing this but found it incredibly challenging um, and I think I'm really, really glad I actually gave it 28 days. I think it would have been really easy for me to read this, read the reflective journaling prompts, make a like half-hearted answer in my head and count that as done, but there was something really valuable for me about actually sitting down and doing the work day after day and it, yeah, I found it really helpful and challenging and I've kind of got this little voice in my head now which is like feeding back into all of these aspects as I'm like going through the world um, and I would I would definitely say it's one of the best anti-racism books and resources particularly for white people that I have come across so if this is new to you and it's of interest for you to do a bit more digging a bit more personal exploration um, I would definitely recommend it. Then the next one sadly I didn't love um, and this is The Mirror and the Palette by Jennifer Higgy um, this looks at the history of women in art, women in portraiture, and looks at how women's self-portraiture has evolved as an art form and the ways that we politicise that, 
um, the stories we tell about that and has um, examples of some of the works within the book as well. I think I either was not into the subject matter enough because it is very specific, it's not women artists, it's women's self-portraiture, um, or the tone of the book was directed at someone who was already very into it because I found it a little bit textbooky. Um, I would say this is probably for someone who is a like artist who likes drawing self-portraits, someone who's already into art history and wants to understand a more niche element of it, but as a topic to someone that doesn't have any background knowledge, I felt like I didn't understand enough of the artists or references or their body of work and I kept kind of having to Google to try and find what painting she was talking about or referring to other artists and learning about them, which wasn't bad, but I think I didn't find it as accessible maybe as um, I'd hoped it would have been. So that is this one. I think it's for a specific type of person. Then next I have a memoir, Pre-Study by Patricia Lockwood. This looks at a family dynamic like no other. Um, it is a comedic memoir, is how I would probably describe it, um, with the characters of her, not characters, but you know what I mean, the characterization of her mother and father within this book really playing the lead roles. I laughed out loud, I reread bits, I, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I know that some people think this is really overhyped and some people love it and I'm, I'm here for it, I enjoyed this um, and I read this one having read the, her, her second novel, sorry, second book, first novel, um, and I'm really glad I did pick it up. I go for backlist less often, um, but this is one that if you haven't read, it really is good. Like, might be a bit more mighty, but I really enjoyed it. Next one was not a love it, but was a like it, and that was Between Light and Storm, How We Live With Other Species by Esther Wolfston. Um, and this book looks at our relationship with animals, so throughout the book we run through different types of relationships that we might have, like um, hunting, tradition, animal rights, museums, blood, the souls of animals, um, loving animals, fur. So it is pretty much like a wide scoping animal rights book. I enjoyed the process of reading it, but it's not something now, sitting back on it, when I read it sort of towards the beginning of the month, I'd immediately think to recommend to people all the time. Um, I don't think it's bad, I really don't, I think I liked it, I just didn't love it, so that's kind of my place on that. Um, but I haven't read much on this topic and I know that Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer is supposed to be one of the like best ones out there, so maybe I'll try reading that one at some point in future. Then the next one I have is a proof, it's Maggie Nelson's On Freedom. This is fairly academic I would say, um, and Maggie Nelson is exploring the lens of freedom and a concept to us. Um, as humans and what we interpret freedom to be through a number of different lenses. Um, so, I don't know whether there is that, yeah there is. Um, so art, song, sex, drugs and climate change. And she looks at how we interpret freedom in each of those elements and what freedom might mean. Um, it feels a little bit like a song of despair would probably be how I would describe it. Um, I liked it as always as Maggie Nelson. Um, I do think that I felt that there was potentially a little bit of a lack of connection between pieces. I could have probably jumped from one to another to another, but I understand why they're all together in that they're, they're all speaking to the same theme. Um, but I didn't maybe have the coherence I've had in some of her other stuff. But having said that, she's very intelligent. She writes across these breadths of subjects and just has little like quite like zingy turns within it, like you kind of, you're carrying along in a row and then she'll throw an idea or a concept or her opinion in and you might go, oh I'd, I'd not thought you thought that or oh I'd not thought about it like that, um, which is always really good fun. Then next I have All the Things She Said by Daisy Jones and I love this book, um, I had so much fun with it. This is an examination of lesbian and bisexual culture in the UK and it's just talking about like all the stuff that she knows about lesbians and bi ladies. Um, so again there's little topics in here. Um, so what is a lesbian anyway? Coming out, the club, pop music, TV, film, style, the internet, dating and mental health. And I just felt very seen in this book. Um, I think some of the stuff that I've read doesn't centre bisexual women alongside lesbians in the way that this book did and I just felt very seen and connected and it was just a really lovely read to have in Pride Month. Um, I think especially if you've grown up in the UK as a woman who likes women you you might find a lot in here um, and the title or the things she said 
that song, I'm pretty sure that song is like trending on TikTok again, um, but I'd for kind of forgotten, I kind of like put it in the back of my head and I was like, oh, like when I listened to it, I was like, oh, it's that song. Um, so this is one for my bi and lesbian ladies um, in the UK who want to feel a bit more seen. And then I have a little stack here of non-fiction books on disability because I have said to myself, after I read the first one, in fact, I'll tell you what the first one was. The first one was Disability Visibility. After I read this one, I was like, I need to get over my fear of reading about disability for the fear that I'm going to be caught by this dichotomy between mental and physical health and I will feel like guilty, basically. I'll feel, it's really odd, like it's a very hard thing to explain. I think it probably is ableism in the way that I was treated and I think it's probably very similar to what a lot of people with not visible conditions um, have when they approach healthcare. Um, but I had I had in my head this real like block that it was gonna it was gonna make me feel really guilty for using health resources basically. Um, but I picked up disability visibility because I was like everybody loves it. I've heard really good things. Just do it. Get on with it. And I love this book. Um, I think. This is probably my favourite of all of them that I've read. It's a collection of sort of short, I guess you'd probably call most of them essays. Would you call them essays? Stories, they call them first person stories. Um, from different people within like different disabled communities, different disabilities, talking about what disability means to them, their experience of the world, the way that they interpret things, but just like stories of kind of I guess it's like a way of making a record, it's a way of saying this is what my life is like and it still has value um, and I just thought it was brilliant and this was something I was quite scared to read so I'm really glad that I did. Um, I know this has been recommended lots and lots and lots, um, but if you haven't picked it up it's brilliant. Then I have two books which are very similar. I have Unwell Women and Pain and Prejudice. I read Unwell Women first so I'm going to talk about this one first and I'll explain why. Um, so both books look slightly into the history of the treatment of women in medicine um, as in as as patients or as service users um, and explore the way in which healthcare is um, affected by the same kind of sexist ideas as everything else but also how sexism could could be considered to be like historically built on sexist understanding um, this is a quite chunky one but I absolutely race through it. We go all the way from like the earliest mentions of women's health in ancient Greece all the way up to the present and look at the way in which that's been interpreted in all of those stages. It's a really good book if you're A, into the disability like reading element of it, but it's also a really good book about like medical history and I think like I'd love to give this to a medical student. This is kind of like the recommendation. I was like, oh, I want to give it, if you're doing medicine, I want you to read this book. Um, so, and that was kind of the hands I wanted to put it in, but I really enjoyed the process of reading it. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about Pain and Prejudice second was because I do feel like I had maybe saturated, saturated myself a little bit by reading them in the same month, in that, sort of, here we are, up to chapter four, we are looking at the history of discrimination against women in medicine again, and we were talking about a lot of the same studies the same doctors, the same um, processes that they used um, in those stories. So I felt like I was repeating myself a little bit. However, this book does sort of do something different. We are we are we focus a little more on the on the modern elements of it and look a little bit more about um, specific conditions. I was really surprised and pleased to see that BPD was noted specifically in here as one of the mental health conditions that is now seen most often like hysteria. Um, and the way that people are treated um, who have BPD and the way that they can be refused care. Um, so that was really interesting because that was touched on in this book and far less so in our well women. Um, but I do feel like this one had a bit of a hard shot at it only because I'd read another one that was so similar. So that's why I wanted to talk about those two together. And then I read a kind of disability classic, which is The Cancer Journals by Audrey Lord which looks at her experience of, of breast cancer. Um, it's very short um, and I found it quite challenging actually. I found it, um, the kind of pain and resilience and the force of her um, 
quite challenging to read but I, I really enjoyed it. It made me think about my boobs <laughs> way more than I had maybe. Um, and made me think about the people that I know in my life who've had breast cancer and what their experiences of that might have been like. Um, yeah, it was just a classic. I saw it and I thought, you know, I've, I don't think I've ever read Audre Law before. So I was like, that seems like a good confluence of things. Um, I know it's not anything new to recommend, um, but yeah, it was it was a kind of quite costing little book. 17 minutes in, we are on to the last of the non-fiction. We've still got fiction to go. Um, and that is Sanatorium by Abby Palmer. Love this, read it in one sitting, absolutely adored it. Um, I think I saw this on Jen's channel um, and maybe on Instagram as well. I feel like I'd seen it some, a couple of places, but this is just, the, the writing is beautiful. We're looking at a woman who is suffering from chronic pain, who seeks to kind of ease that through this elongated stay at a sanatorium and we follow that story alongside the story of her trying to mimic this place that she was in at home whilst also kind of critiquing the assumptions about her body that were made even in this place that was dedicated to people whose bodies were there because they they needed additional help so yeah mostly it's just the way that it was written like there's this piece in here where she has a lemon tree and the lemon tree begins to kind of suffer and get a bit more unwell and essentially there's there's um like weevils vine weevils <laughs> there's a bit like my flipping fungus gnats but there becomes this like infestation of this pest on her tree and she goes to the garden center to ask why they think the tree is so infested and it's spreading to all the other plants and he basically says that the tree's immune system is too weak to support itself and she has to get rid of this tree but she loves this tree because it is kind of a little bit broken like and it, yeah it, the the metaphors that she's using and the examples that she's using to get across that emotionality of what her experience is I just thought were gorgeous and there's also just some very raw like realness that's not doesn't need to be told through a metaphor it's it's more powerful told just straight um but i yeah i love this this is probably my best book of the month i would say um but if you haven't read this one already please do i tell a lie there's one more non-fiction it's just at the bottom of this fiction pile and that is radioactive um by lauren redness um this is a, another graphic non-fiction um which is a very pretty. I enjoyed this one slightly less than Oak Flat, um, but this is looking at the life of Marie Curie and the discovery of radioactivity and the uses of radioactivity and the impact on from that. Um, you know, they're beautiful. I love, I think it's so inventive to have non-fiction told in a different format. I think lots of people get quite anxious or nervous at the idea that they might sit down and read non-fiction it might feel textbooky and I feel like this would be such a good gift well, I'm doing a gift guide now <laughs> but it'd be such a good gift for someone that is like I'm not into non-fiction and be like oh just try this one um yeah so again liked it I've got thunder and lightning of her left to read which I don't own yet but I will at some point um and I just think it's very clever I kind of oh it's falling I I kind of think um there should be more books that do this. Okay, and on to fiction. First, I have a graphic novel, Sheets, um, by Brenna Thalmer. This is a very cute little um, graphic novel about the relationship between a girl whose mother has passed away and her father is depressed, I would say, um, and she is trying to hold together their laundromat and she develops a friendship with a ghost who is like an outcast from the ghost zone. Um, it's just very cute. It's one of those things like, easily pass like two hours or whatever reading somewhere nice. Um, I also think it probably would be suitable for sort of children as well. I don't think you know that you've got the the dad who's not very well in the book but I also don't think it's so oppressive that you wouldn't be able to read it at like 13 on maybe. I don't have kids I always feel bad recommending books when I don't have children in my life but it feels like something maybe like teenaged young teenagers might enjoy. Okay and then for fiction first one I have is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I read this one, just inhaled it. Um, this is like the only kind of um, sci-fi, which is like really my jam, 
which is like modern sci-fi which is heavy on like technical detail I'm not into like great big world building stuff but I am into like single people spaceship stuff and not like loads of weird crew dynamics um yeah I read this because my little brother wanted me to read it and I'm glad I read it it was entertaining and um very similar like in the character and the way it's written to the Martian it's um what I would call it, it's kind of the kind of sci-fi you often see in sci-fi films like heroic white guy stuff um but it was good fun to read and it's not not like anything else I really read so it's a nice little break into some genre fiction then next I have Animal by Lisa Tadeo this is a book which I was disappointed by but not, didn't dislike um we follow a young woman who is moved has moved to this kind of quite isolated area and she is very wild is the only way I can really describe her. She is running away from I don't know whether it whether it's yeah, so there it is from the beginning of the book. Um she's running away from the fact that she, she was the mistress of a man um, who she worked with and he killed himself in a restaurant um, and she's running away from this very kind of graphic fact about herself and the impact of her decision whilst making some really bad decisions about her own life. Um, it's very messy and I don't think it was... I think it was kind of what I expected from Lisa Tadeo um, but I also... I'm not sure that it will s stay with me. Um, I wonder whether the messiness is something that is now more commonly done if we think about things like boy parts for example that takes the messiness like to a slightly different level to where we are here um, and whilst this goes quite far it's quite a violent book I don't know that I felt the same kind of punch in the gut that I felt with with boy parts um, yeah disappointed but didn't dislike it so I think it's quite a hard one to say I think maybe my expectations were quite high um, and I wouldn't say don't read it like it's not one I would say like oh it's not worth your time but maybe just don't expect it to be your book of the year the next one is one I actually would say don't read and this is The Girl at the Door by Veronica Ramo um, this follows a young woman who comes to the door of a professor uh, and says to his pregnant wife or believe she's pregnant that um, her husband has raped her they live in this odd society um, which is kind of supposed to be slightly perfect is probably how I'd describe it and everything has to be handmade and eco-friendly and people get judged on their character and their ability to enter the, the location um, but do you know what it was just a bit weird like a bit weird like not in a way that I'm like oh it was really unusual you should go and read it I just read a bit weird and I read it but kind of wish I hadn't spent the time on it and I don't say that very often so yeah there's nothing that wrong with it though I did find it odd that we were not following the rape victim's point of view at any point during the story it was all the rapist's point of view um and his partner who was seemingly fine with it um but I just kind of wish I hadn't read it so yeah I would say don't read that one next I have another one I got through really quick which is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson this is a book about a woman who has had a relationship with another girl when she was in school they then go their own separate ways and later when they are grown-ups she gets a message from her asking for her to do something for her sort of as a favour or yeah sort of please can you help me I need some help um, and she becomes the caregiver to two children who spontaneously combust into flames this was very sweet um, I was surprised that I didn't feel like the female character that was written by a man felt awkward it didn't feel awkward at all um and I, it, it was I mean it shouldn't be that impressive but it was kind of like there weren't too many like woman looking at woman's body in surprise moments which you can sometimes get when men write women <laughs> um and yeah I I very much enjoyed this I can see why it was kind of did well I don't know when it came out I don't know when let's see when were you published 2019 yeah I can see why it did well I don't know if he's written anything else um, but it was just like a bizarre pacey little book the next one is one that I've spoken about in my vlog and I spoke about it quite a lot in my in my vlog um, but it's At Night or Blood is Black by David Diop 
Yeah, go read this one. Um, it's one of the Man Booker International books. It won, I think. God, that's bad, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it won. Um, and this, this book is about the Second World War and one of the soldiers who loses his friend and turns in on himself, I would say. It's so short, but it needs to be. Like, the, the kind of themes that go throughout it and the repetitions throughout the book fit within the pages perfectly. And we go along fairly, it feels fairly slow, um, but at the same time the writing can be quite explosive. So it's a very, it's a very like, it's a book that, that forces you not to put it down almost. Um, and yeah, I definitely thought it was one of the better ones that I've read of this year. I don't know that I thought it was the best. I think my favorite was The Employees, but it is genuinely a damn good book. The last paperback is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. Um, this book is about an explosion at a hyperbaric oxygen treatment center, um, which looks to treat people for a variety of different medical conditions. Um, and we know that there's been this loss of life and this terrible accident, and we follow what's happened through a court case. So it's kind of a thriller um, or a mystery. I will say I knew what the outcome was going to be, I knew what the ending was really early on into this book, but I still really liked it. I don't read a lot of like court dramas, um, and I thought it was pacey and good to read. I don't think, again, I don't think it's like, don't expect it to be your best book ever, but it was really good fun. And I'm pretty sure I saw, apologies, my camera just decided I can't possibly film for that length of time and I must have wandered off. Um, two left. So the next one is Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. This one, Guys, I've been led astray by you. I thought I was going to love it. Um, I like the beginning. The premise was good, that there's a woman who discovers that her boyfriend has secretly been, has secretly created this conspiracy theory um, Instagram account and isn't the person who she thinks he is. But, and light spoilers, he dies and pisses off and we then just follow her having sex with random people in Berlin for a long time and I was so bored by that I couldn't be bothered I nearly DNF'd it the ending brought it back to being like ah, okay fine I read it and I'm kind of okay that I read it but it's another one that I probably would have had the time back if you ask if you could ask me now like if I went back and advised past Sophia but like I think you'd rather read something else then the last book we have is one that has been so hyped. So I'm so sorry because I'm going to add to the hype. I love this book. Um, it's The Other Black Girl by Zakia Dahlia Harris. And this follows a woman called Nella who works in a publishing house called Wagner um, and is the only black member of staff, um, never mind the only black woman. And a new girl comes into the workplace and everything starts to change a little bit. Um, I would describe this as something close to a thriller um, but without the kind of fear of it, maybe like a little bit mystery-esque. Um, but I haven't really stopped thinking about it and Tom was like that's such a good idea, that's such a good idea, that should be a film. Um, it is, yeah, the only, only thing I would say, I, I genuinely think it's really really good and you should read it, the only thing I should say is I thought the mechanism, for, if you've read it you'll know what I'm talking about and I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't, the mechanism of the plot twist, I didn't, I didn't identify with that, I kind of wished it had been something a bit more solid, um, but I really enjoyed it, I didn't want to put it down, I read it and it's pretty big in two days, um, if you have not got your mitts on this one yet, please do. My back hurts. That's been a lot of like setting up, like I'm trying to set up really tall so that you can still see me. But those are all the books I read in June. There's a lot again. I hope it's been nice to see so many non-fiction books um, on my list this month. I'll see you guys again soon in my next video and look after yourselves. Until then, bye!